Christ's mercy and peace is yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the uh, lesson from the Acts of the Apostle, which has been so nicely read to you. My dear friends, I have to tell you, sometimes, every once in a while, you go look for the, the text and you go look for the uh, bulletin and the sermon and you realize that God threw you a softball. That, 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 that some part of it is, is really easy. Now, I gotta tell you, if you're looking just at the text, uh, not, not so easy, okay? Because the text is about what the apostles and the disciples and followers of Jesus did immediately following uh, Pentecost, immediately following the time when he was taken up into heaven, the ascension, and then Pentecost was followed. Because it says, now the whole group of those who believed were one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. And it talks for a couple of verses about how that worked, how they sold everything that they had and they gave to the poor and they gave to each other and they took care of each other. And you know that we have a couple problems with that text. Uh, one of the problems is we know it didn't work out too well. And one of the problems is we look at that and we say, gosh, we've tried that recently and uh, communism hasn't worked too well either, this whole idea of, of, of sharing everything. But I will say this about it. It was very clear. It was very clear to them what they should do and, and, and sometimes clarity comes to us from God in, in some strange ways. He's in some, some ways that, that, that don't seem to work. It wasn't easy for the apostles and disciples and those who followed Jesus to get together and to do this. We can tell it wasn't easy because it didn't last very long. It didn't last very long until all of a sudden this couple Ananias and Sapphira came forward and they said that they were followers and they said that they had sold this plot of land, they were giving everything that they had. It turned out they weren't giving everything. They held some back. And if you go on to read the text, you find out that God strikes each of them dead because of their withholding and their unwillingness to tell the truth. That's one of the really harsh places in the New Testament. We see, in the Old Testament, we see people dying all the time. In the New Testament, we don't often see that. And this is one of those places where it's just, it's just amazingly harsh. And we wonder what's going on there. There were some messages there. But that's not really what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about today is how God makes us His application of grace. How God loved us enough to give us everything and require nothing in return. How God then made us like Jesus, calls us brothers and sisters of Jesus, and sends us out with this joyous and amazing message to share God's grace. To share that God loves everyone. To share that God loves us when we were sinners, when we were making mistakes, when we were dead to our trespasses of sins. What are the ways, can we say it, when we were doing the wrong things, God was making us right. That's pretty amazing. And then it says to us, go share the most important thing, which is that love which I've given to you. Don't hold back, because there will always be more. So, in some ways, this little story of the disciples gathering together and sharing everything that they have is an example of God's grace with us as human beings. It's an example of how it works, but most of the time, even when we're being gracious, even when we're sharing God's love, even when we're doing our best to forgive sins, we find that we're still, like the people in the story, flawed. Flawed human beings, sinful human beings who make mistakes just like Ananias and Sapphira, and thankfully, God doesn't strike us dead at that moment. Thankfully, we continue to live, but we live in that grace and mercy, that forgiveness that comes. We live in that when we come up and we receive Christ's body and blood, and we're reminded of the fact that we are part of the body of Christ, and that there is forgiveness for our sins, and we're reminded again of who we are in Him. But the problem is, my friends, that sometimes, after a while, we kind of get to a point where we go, gosh, can I mess it up any other ways? Now, maybe you're better than I am, okay? Maybe you haven't had this experience, but I, here's, here's my experience, okay? I do something nice for somebody, or I give something to somebody, or I share something with somebody, and what's the first thing I do? I go tell somebody, right? I gotta go tell somebody because I want somebody else to know how, how wonderful I was and what I did. And even when I'm trying to be humble about it, it still doesn't come across as humble because sooner or later you tell the story and then all of a sudden, what have you done? You put it right out there, right? Or other times, it, it's even worse than that because I think about it before I even do it. 
Before I even do something nice, I start to think about, wow, maybe people will notice that I did this. Maybe people will notice that I'm really a special person and they'll give me a break because of the fact that I went and I did this and they'll see all of I haven't done that, have you? Of course not, right? That's the problem. We start to get to this point where we start to question whether or not we really can be God's applications of grace in the world. We start to question whether or not we can do it in the right way. We start to question whether our human motives and our sinful flawedness gets in the way all the time. Or somehow doesn't get worked out. And in the midst of that struggle, I find that sometimes I get stopped dead in my tracks from doing the right things. I kind of get stopped because I, I'm, I'm thinking too much. I'm thinking about what's my motivation, and my motivation as a sinful human being is always the wrong motivation. Because my focus is on me, it starts to become a problem for me living out that application of God's grace. So I want you just for a moment to think about it from God's point of view, not from yours. Take a look at this from God's point of view about what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to be an application of God's grace. Well, if we look at it from God's point of view, what we start to notice is that our actions, the things we do, are in Jesus. And the truth of the matter is it doesn't matter how loudly we shout, look at me, look what I've done. The fact is, most of the world won't notice, but God does. God notices not because of what we did, not because of how good we thought we were, not because of saying how good we were. God notices because of Jesus. Because in Christ, we are that new creation, and everything that we have then done is not flawed, and is not sinful. It is in Christ who is perfect, and God only sees us applying His grace, His love, His mercy, sharing with others, sharing of ourselves. I think that the lesson from the children's message is an important one. We get so wrapped up in the things that we have and how important that they are, that we don't notice the fact that the sharing of ourselves is the sharing of the greatest thing we have, and the sharing of God's love and mercy in us is part of that. In fact, it's the biggest part, it's the one that makes us valuable, is that we are God's creation again, brothers and sisters in Christ. And so when we do something, it's not done with our flawed and sinful human fingers on it. It's been sanctified, made holy, just as we can't see or feel or touch bread and the wine becoming the body and blood of Jesus. You may not be able to see and touch and feel how your good deeds, the things that you do, are becoming God's work. Which brings me back to where God gave me a softball. Threw me a nice, easy pitch to get out of the park this Sunday. Because God gave me all of you. And last week, I got to see it in all of you. Now, I'm sure all of you are sitting there kind of wondering, unless you're on my staff, they got to hear this early. How, what am I talking about? Well, let me tell, take us back a week and a day, okay? I know it's hard to remember last Saturday, all right? A week and a day takes us back to last Saturday. I'm sitting at home, and I'm not stressed about the sermon because I'm not preaching, okay? I got, I got one of my other guys in the white suit to come up and preach, so I don't have that problem, right? But it's not like my life is problemless because I am making the announcements at the end of the day. And in the announcements, I've got... Two things that, that I'm going to talk about, for sure, in terms of giving. One thing that's come up as a worldwide surprise, and one thing that nobody knows about. So, let's, let's list those real quickly. I've got the food baskets for Thanksgiving and Christmas that we, that we give to to take care of people who are less fortunate. We've got the Adopt-A-Family that's going on, where we're trying to get 55 gifts in for two families that we're trying to take care of. And then on top of that, there is the horrible natural disaster in the Philippines, and we have tens of thousands of people who are dead, and tens and hundreds of thousands of people without their homes, and people thinking about how they can help out. And on top of that, during that week, I'd gotten a phone call. And the phone call came, and it was from Pastor Pesa, who was over at the uh, Tongan Church. And as you know, they're giving their food baskets for Thanksgiving. They're giving those to the Friday, to Friday to have a meal for the homeless. And 
what you didn't know is that in deciding to do that, they couldn't find a space that was going to work well, so they decided they were going to put up a tent. And then they decided they were going to build the tent, and then they told me it was going to be $800 for the tent, but they'd take that out of the food money, so I didn't have to worry about it. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't take the $800 out of the food money, okay? If people give the food money, they want to go to food. So I said, here's what I'll do. I can approve the $800. The board lets me approve up to a certain amount. I was close to my amount. I, I, I can approve the tent, okay? So we were good until last week. I get the call, and the call comes in, and it's Pastor Pace explained to me the tent wasn't $800. They went out to try to rent the tent, and the, the tent was really, really expensive to rent, and so he went and negotiated, and he found somebody who would sell him a tent. It was one of these big 30 by 50 foot tents, $2,700. Now, I get this phone call on like a Thursday or a Friday night while I'm out to dinner with my wife, okay? And I say to him, well, here's the deal. <laughs> so, I don't have $2,700, so I'm just going to be able to, you know, do, and more than that, I have to get the board to approve it. More than that, I, you know, I got 800 for you. I said, but I'll do what I can, not knowing at all what I was going to do, to be honest with you. And he says, anything you give is great. Even if you can't give us anything, it's fine, it's great. I'm going to find a way. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, the sinful human being that I am, flawed that I am, yeah, right. Because, hey, come on. It, this would have been a struggle for anybody to come up with. So on Saturday night, I'm sitting with my laundry list of stuff and my stress, which is not the sermon, and I'm trying to figure out announcements, and it, it dawns on me that this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to just open it up and not tell everybody what's there. Because remember last week, I didn't tell you what that extra thing was? And here's the amazing stuff. So 24 hours later, I have all $1,900 for the tent plus the 800 that we're kicking in together as a church. I called Pastor Pesa, and he, and he, I thought he was going to cry on the phone, okay? He was so moved because he says, he says, Pastor, they called me this morning, and I was supposed to come down and pick it up, and, and I didn't have the money. And he was so moved that we had come up with the money for him. But there's more to the story. Because you see, the other thing that happened was Monday morning I walked in and I took a look at the, actually it was Sunday afternoon, so I was coming back from Bell's. I looked at the, at the socks that were up on the, up on the, you know, the wall. And uh, usually, Sunday after we announced that, we might have gotten rid of three, four, 33 out of 57 were gone. 33, over half, 60% of the, of, the, of the gifts were already pulled down because you were moved to do that, to give of who you are. So suddenly, my little worries about how to present things, and what to do, and where it would come from, were gone. Because God's people, you, the body of Christ, had in many and various ways shared. Through your regular offerings, through your special offerings, through taking one of the socks down, through all of those different ways, you were the application of God's grace. You were and are the application of sharing God's grace. And I've got to tell you, there's some moments when, as a pastor, you, you, you preach, and you think you did a good job, and you walk out the door, and you hear people say things, or you find out people did things, and you go, why am I bothering? Sorry, but that's the truth. And I'm sure there's sometimes people say things to me and try to teach me things, and then I go and do my own thing, and they say, why did I bother talking to him? Right? But this was a Sunday to remember, November 10th, 2013. It was a Sunday to remember because God, for a moment, threw me that softball. Let me see the application very, very clearly. Let me see how all of us, as the body of Christ, were working together to be His application of grace in the world, to share what we had, to share it freely, and to give of what we have and who we are to be out in this world. And it wasn't tainted at all. It wasn't tainted with us or anybody else saying, look at what we've done. It was pure. It was God's. And it is ours. Amen. Will you pray with me? Look out, our Heavenly Father, as we see those opportunities and as we see those places where you have shown us that we can be the application of your grace in the world that hurts. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to also see your Son and not ourselves. That you would help us to see the forgiveness that we have in Jesus Christ 
and the fact that we are brothers and sisters in Him who loved us first when we were unlovable. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to give. To give of our things, but more importantly, to give of ourselves and to be the application of your grace in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rise and bless our faith.